Crafting Corner, yeah. How to make a whirly gig from start to finish. To view each part separately, go to my channel. Pose Crafting Corner, yeah. Making a whirly gig, part one. Washing the water bottle. Oh yeah. <laughs> hey, who took my recycling? Hi there, this is Poe. I'm going to be doing a tutorial with you. Today, we are making a water bottle whirly gig. This is how it works. Just like that, it spins when you blow on it or when you put it in the wind outside. It just naturally spins, okay? Today, I'm doing a tutorial with you on how to make a water bottle whirly gig. What I've decided is, since I'm here in my house, just like you, or mostly everyone, um, staying away from outside and other people, social distancing right now, with the whole coronavirus thing that's going on, and all the different sicknesses that people are catching right now, it's just one of those times. And I thought it would be a great idea for everyone to do something that's fun and to get us happy, okay? So doing an art activity always makes me happy. So why don't you join me? All right, let's make a really gig together. Okay, so our first step was to grab a water bottle. I've got mine here. It's recycled, we're going to reuse it, which is great since we're kind of stuck at home at this time. It's good to think of little art activities that you can do with objects you find around the house. So recycled objects is great. So we're going to be using our water bottle, okay? Now, since we've got sicknesses going around right now, the best thing to do is to wash the water bottle. I'm going to do it in two steps. I'm going to use some soap and water first, and then I'm going to submerge it in the bleach water mixture right here. Okay, I would suggest doing that. The bleach especially will kill any viruses or germs, or it should, that are on the water bottle. All right, so here we go. Okay, so as you can see, I've washed my water bottle with soap and water. Now I'm going to submerge it, like I said, in my water bleach mixture here. As you can see, I'm wearing these rubber kitchen gloves. Wear them so that your skin does not get harmed from the bleach. All right, so I'm just dipping it in here. You can hear the bubbles, it's kind of funny. <laughs> you can make sure that it's actually going to stay in the water. All right, I'm just kind of spinning it around so it's all in contact with the bleach. Okay, and now I'm also going to wash the lid because we will be using that for our burly gig. Okay, all right, so we're just going to let that sit in the bleach water for a couple minutes and we'll come back, take them out, put them in the drying rack right here. All right, we'll be back in a few minutes. All right, I'm back. Okay, so now we've got our water bottle and lid here. Okay, I'm just getting out the bleach water. Okay, so we've got that. Let me get the lid. Okay, we've got the lid. I'm just going to rinse these out before I let them dry, just so that when I get back to them and work with them with my hands, I don't get the bleach on my skin. Alrighty, so now I'm going to put this upside down in my drying rack here. Is it gonna stand? There we are. And I'm gonna do the same with my cap there. All right, so we're just going to let those sit there for a few minutes until they dry, and I'll come back and grab them and we'll get on to the actual craft. Pose Crafting Corner, yeah. Making a Whirly Gig, Part 2. Water Bottle Prep. Oh yeah! <laughs> hey, who took my recycling? All right, so I got the water bottle and the cap out of my drying rack. They are clean enough right now. There are a few droplets of water on the inside. Don't worry about that. It's not that big of a deal. 
Okay, so the first step now that the bottle is clean that we're going to do is we're going to make a hole in the center bottom of the bottle. What that will do is when we take our pole, rod, um, knitting needle, stick, anything that we're using for the whirly gig to spin along, okay, it's going to slide through there, okay? It's going to slide through that hole. So make sure the hole is the same size, if not a tiny bit bigger, than the rod or pole of some sort that you are using. Today I am using something called a Tunisian crochet hook. It's just what I could find at the time. It may sound strange, my mom and dad owned a yarn shop when I was younger, so we've got lots of things like this. It's very similar to a knitting needle, but it has two crochet hook ends. That's just what I'm using today, okay? So it's long enough that it can stick in the bottle, but then there's length at the bottom, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it to poke the hole in the center bottom of my bottle. How I'm doing that is I have a hammer. All right, so you wanna use your hammer. I have a piece of wood and I have two pieces of small cork board here. I got it from the dollar store, but you can really use anything that is a bit soft. Um, styrofoam, maybe a few layers of fabric if you want to. And that's just so that when you are hammering, okay, I have a piece down here, I put my wood there so that when I'm hammering it doesn't injure my table. And then I have a piece on top so that when I try to puncture the hole through it, then it doesn't just stop at the piece of wood, it goes through something, okay? So that's what I'm doing. And I'm making sure that this is just right on top of the piece of wood that's underneath. You can kind of feel it there, all right? I have my crochet hook or my Tunisian crochet hook. I'm just going to sit it right in the center of the bottle there, okay? And then I'm going to take my um, hammer here and just smack it lightly with a bit of pressure. I think it may, it's starting to go through. All right. I'm just going to pull this up there, kind of twist it around. You can see it does spin along there, which is great, okay? All right, so now we have our hole there, okay? You can even do that. All right, there's the hole. That is the first step you want to do. It's really difficult to get the hole in the bottle after you have done all the other steps because at that point the water bottle is quite flimsy and it is hard to do anything to at that point. So now I'm done that step. The next step I'm going to do is I'm going to stuff the water bottle with my paper scraps I have here. The reason why I do that, I've tried different things. The reason why I do that though is because when we are tracing from our stencil here that you can grab. I'll provide that for you. Um, when we are tracing it on here and when we are carving out these sections, it tends to collapse. You see that it collapses. We don't want that to happen. It makes it very difficult to work with. So when we stuff the bottle, it becomes um, a lot less flimsy and easier to cut. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Okay, I have filled the water bottle finally. All right, there it is. As you can see, much sturdier. It shouldn't collapse on you when you're carving or tracing on the stencil. Pose Crafting Corner, yeah. Making a Whirly Gig, part three. Preparing template. Oh yeah. <laughs> Hey, who took my recycling? The next step that you want to do is print out your, uh, your template here that I created. All right, if you do not have a printer, 
um, or you just don't feel like printing it at the moment, that's perfectly fine. Just get out a ruler and a marker or pencil. And I have the measurements on the template for you. You will find it linked in the description box um, below this video. You can see here that the measurement uh, right here, that's for both sides. The measurement at the top is for the top and bottom. The measurements for this little flag here that you see, they are for each of the flag portions here. They are all the exact same size. Okay. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to cut this out. As you can see here, this dotted line, um, these dotted lines, they are to fold. They are to fold. You will be folding them on your water bottle. So you may as well just keep them on there, fold them on your template so you remember that you will not cut them off of the water bottle. You're going to fold them. I'll show you that when we get to that point. What I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to cut this, you can cut along with me, and then we will trace. All right. Alright, so I have cut out most of these. I'm just going to show you along the fold here. I'm just picking that up, putting my finger along where the fold is so it has an edge to crease over. That's what I'm doing. Push it over and fold. Okay, so that's what I'm doing here. Alright, as you can see, this one I kind of cut up a bit too much. Don't worry about it if you accidentally cut the middle ones. Um, because you're trying to find a way to cut it out properly. Don't worry about it. Even if you have to cut it off entirely, that's fine because you are only tracing the hole. So don't worry about it at all if that happens. I'm not going to worry about it. All right, just folding these back just so I remember. Okay, so now I'm going to tape my template onto my water bottle. I would suggest the best thing to do is try to find center, go to your center line here, okay? Your center little line like that. Try to make it in a nice central part of your water bottle, all right? Try to make it so it's not going where it's curving because it can get quite difficult when you get to that. So I just have my tape here. I'm just going to take a small piece. I'm going to tape down the bottom part here first. All right, just like that. I'm going to tape the top part here. Just like that. All right, you want to have all the bottom to be along the same line of your water bottle, the same with the top. All right, so if what you taped is kind of on a tilt as mine is, you can just peel back some of your tape and just eye it up until you get it right. All right, and then you can tape the top and bottom of each of your rows here. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, we've got it here. I'm just folding these back again. All right, you can see that. So that's how it is so far. Now what you're going to do is you're finally going to trace it. So I've got my marker here, permanent marker you want to use since it is a plastic water bottle. If you use something that's washable or just not permanent, it will probably wipe off, all right? So I'm using a permanent marker. So now what I'm doing is I'm just tracing in each of these areas. For the top and the bottom um, flag areas, you'll just pretty much have to eyeball it. Find the ridge of your water bottle and you can sort of follow along with that, all right? So I'm just going to go ahead and do that right now. Here we 
we are. So I traced all of the whole areas. Okay, there should be 12 different sections that you have traced. You want to make sure you did the angle that gives it a bit of flair. Um, it will be covered. However, that ensures that you have them going on an angle along your water bottle, which will work better for it to catch the air. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the stencil from the water bottle. So here we go. There we are. We have our tracing done. Crafting corner, yeah. Making a whirly gig, part four. Cutting the water bottle. Oh yeah. <laughs> hey, who took my recycling? Now what we can do is cut these out. Remember, okay? Remember that you are going to just fold along these lines. The straight ones going up and down. <clears throat> You're going to cut the top and bottom line of each traced area, and you're going to cut the line that is on an angle, not the line that is going up and down. All right, so I'm just going to do that right now. Use a sharp X-Acto blade. If you use a dull X-Acto blade, it can slip, you can hurt yourself. It's much safer using a sharp one. All right, take your time with it. You want to you want to enjoy the experience of this project, okay? So take your time with it, and um, if you rush, it can slip. You might cut out more than you wanted, so take your time. All right. Also, one point that I want to mention is that if you're using an X-Acto blade for these sections, start off in the center of the area that you're cutting, that will prevent you cutting past the line, all right? Because since the X-Acto blade is triangular shaped, it can go further than you would have hoped. So start in the center of each line. And keep your fingers out of the way of the blade. So all of yours should look something like this. With all the flags sticking out, you see the great thing about it being a water bottle is that each of these flags are going to be curved. So they're going to kind of scoop the air into them, which is going to make it really spin really well, which is really cool about this whirly gig. That makes it a bit different from others possibly, okay? The next step we're going to do is we are going to take out all of the stuffing you put in there closer to the beginning. You can just put your finger through each of the holes to grab the pieces, just like that. So I'm going to empty out my water bottle and you can do the same right now. last piece here there we are so hopefully you all were able to or are able to get out these pieces pretty easily try to make sure that when you stuff it the pieces aren't too huge so that it's a bit easier to take them out all right and you may need to adjust and Press these back again, shouldn't be too difficult. There we are. Just going to move aside all my scraps here. You can definitely use them again as well for something. Okay, or if you're going to make another whirly gig or you know someone else who wants to in the house, you can use those same scraps again. Puzz 
crafting corner, yeah. Making a whirly gig, part five. Decorating. Oh yeah. <laughs> hey, who took my recycling? Next step we're doing, we finally get to decorate our whirly gig. Okay, really cool, really fun. What I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the water bottle with some craft paint that I have here. Of course, it's plastic. Um, I would recommend doing a few coats just so it's on there a lot better and it's more opaque unless you want this kind of see-through, um, like stained glass kind of look, which can also be really interesting so that the light shines through. You can do that as well. I may do that. Um, to give it a bit extra flair, I cut out these little handprints Okay, these little handprints here, cut them out out of just some recycled cardboard. These are from some lard packaging. I also have some from Kleenex boxes that you can just cut out. They are like that thin cardboard, cereal box kind of material. I would suggest using that so they're not too flimsy. I cut two um, for each flag. They are the opposite, so you can put them back to back, and so you get the color on both sides. All right, it's also kind of cool with the little designs or pictures or wording that is from the material you're using. It stays on it, which is pretty cool, instead of just painting it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint it first, but then I'm going to glue these onto each flag. They are about the same size. I'm going to glue them onto each flag here so that when it spins, it's kind of like they're saying hello. It's kind of like your whirly gig is saying hi to you. It's waving at you. Of course, you might not be able to be with your friends right now or with your loved ones that much, but at least you have a little reminder that someone's there with you saying hi, your little whirly gig here, okay? Made a little friend for yourself. There you go. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint my whirly gig here. I have hand prints. I have purple for the bottom row. I'm going to do purple handprints along the bottom row of flags. I've got my blue handprints I'm doing on the next row. I've got some minty, what, tealy, whatever color, greeny color of handprints for the next. And then I've got the yellow. So I'm going to kind of have almost like an ombre going on. And I've got paint to match. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to paint all this first. Then I'm going to attach these. So please go ahead, you can start decorating. I'm going to as well. All right, here we go. Okay, so I painted the whirly gig and I attached the little hands to it. Just like I said, as it spins, it says hello to you. It's your new little friend. Okay, kind of funny. Um, as you can see, it's kind of goofy looking, right? It is, and you could do anything you wanted. You could have it like this. You could add more detail to it, make it more of an art piece if you wanted. Do whatever you'd like, like I said. So now is the moment of truth. Let's see if it works, okay. Look at that, it works. Okay, that's so great. It's pretty fun to do. So what you can do, it works with your own breath if you want, you can blow on it all you want, that's fun too. Or what you can do is you could, if you have a plant outside or in your garden, you could stick it in it, depending on how tall your pole is. You could stick it in the ground and watch it outside as it spins with the wind. All right, and there is our whirly gig. All right, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and send me your pics. Attach them in the messages down below, um, attached to the, at the bottom of the YouTube video. I'd love to see what your whirly gigs look like. All right, see you next time. Hi everyone, thanks for joining me with this water bottle whirly gig tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed following along with me. 
If you did not get a chance while watching the video, feel free to watch it again and pause at the certain areas that you would like to follow along to. Thanks so much. And please remember to like and subscribe to my video and my channel and click the bell button to get notifications for every time I post. I really hope you join me next time for my next video. Can't wait to find out what it is. See you next time. Bye. Crafting corner, yeah.